Hello and welcome to the lecture series on economics of growth and development. In the previous classes, we have seen what does poverty means. We have also seen the different types of it. That is the relative poverty as well as absolute poverty. Thereafter, we have looked at the international estimates of poverty and various committees in the Indian context which talked about estimation of poverty, both in the pre-independence phase as well as the post-independence phase. In today's class, I am talking about an important statement made by Ragnar Nux, which says that a country is poor because it is poor. And this statement can be analyzed with the help of an example let us assume that there is an individual who does not have enough to eat and this results into or culminates into he being or she being underfed and as a result of that that particular individual has weak health this translates into something called as physical weakness and this physical weakness will lead to his or her contribution going down towards the pro process of production that is low working capacity or his productivity is going to go down and because of that that individual becomes poor so this is how you can look at what what the the, the uh, what the energy levels which were which were which were low in the beginning have resulted into which is something called as poverty and this continues in as a spiral now you know that he cannot he or she cannot work because they have low productivity and as a result of that they are poor furthermore again they are not fed enough or they are underfed or do not have enough to eat and this circle continues this circle continues just look at this from an individual's perspective when you apply this to an economy that all the individuals in the, that economy are going through this process that means that country is going to be obviously poor so you see how poverty is entrenched into uh, into the circle or uh, in a circular flow when they do not have enough to eat and that culminates into these different uh, or reflects into these different steps and as a result of that that individual is poor so whenever so Ragnar Nurk says that this situation if it relates to a country and if that thing happens that is on a macro level if you see that all the individuals are not fed enough they do not have or they do not have proper health they cannot translate that uh, into into any working capacity then they are poor and when this happens at a macro level in an economy or a country you call that to be a country is poor because it is poor so this is how Ragnar Nux justifies his statement saying that a country is poor because it is poor I gave you an example of an individual and then we saw that if these individuals are multiplied in a large number and seen at a macro level meaning thereby all the individuals in that economy if they are they are poor that means that country is poor so this is how Ragnar Nux translates his idea of a country is poor because it is poor let us now look at another important uh, landmark thing which which Ragnar Nux talked about it is called as the vicious circles of poverty now he says that these these forces operate on two fronts that is on the demand side as well as the supply side so first under, let us understand what does a vicious circle of poverty particularly means so a vicious circle implies that there is a circular constellation of forces that act and react in such a way upon each other that they lead to something called as state of poverty in an economy so this is what Ragnar Nurk talked about when he was talking about this sort of a circular thing which is happening at a micro level when you multiply that on a, or when you view that thing on a macro level you see a circular sort of an arrangement working in the entire economy but he says that apart from this th there is a circular constellation of forces operating on the demand side as well as the supply side and these forces are acting upon each other and making sure that a country remains in the state of poverty so these are called as vicious circles of poverty in the next class i'll be talking about both the demand side vicious circles as well as the supply side vicious circle which are acting as a hindrance or an obstacle to the development or growth of an economy per se yeah so please stay tuned thank you